Hello Rockville, here's what you need to know about your city. This month we're bringing you coverage from the Twilight Run Fest. We sit down with City Manager Scott Ullery and go one-on-one -on -one with Council Member Mark Prashela. All that and more in this edition of Rockville's 11. It's a tradition that happens every summer. The 8K Rockville Rotary Twilight Run Fest happened again this year and our Isaac Asari was there to cover all the action for our number 11 story. I really like the race around here, so people are very nice, the cheering and it's a lot of fun here, so I really like it to come and race in here, you know, I, I like it. Some of us have, have had some experience running and we were wanting the rest of the family to enjoy it. We especially wanted these two to enjoy it. Okay, did you have fun tonight? Yep. My motivation for running was when I was uh, in my 30s, actually 31, my three-year-old daughter tagged me and ran and said, you can't catch me. And I was over 200 pounds. I was smoking and I was a junk food person. So from that time to now, I have been working on my health, fitness, and nutrition. The Department of Rec and Parks threw a big party for all their summer campers this month in July, Rec and Parks Month. We were there to cover it for our number 10 story. Everybody clap your hands. Clap, hands. clap, 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 clap your hands. Clap, 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 clap your hands. All right, now, we're going to do the basic step. To the left. Take it back now, y'all. One hop this time. Right the flash mob dance was one of the activities kids participated in at the city's Let's Move Celebration of Health event. Superintendent of Recreation Betsy Thompson orchestrated the event. Well, today is a celebration of health called Let's Move. It's part of the Michelle Obama campaign to, to uh, get cities and towns out, to get their kids to, to move. Um, they're fighting childhood obesity, juvenile diabetes, things like that, and try to, get, try to encourage kids to move outside with their friends having fun. It's all about fun, not just necessary exercise or fitness, but really fun. Staffer Randy Henry says dependency on technology makes an event like this even more important. It is important because um, a lot of kids nowadays are relying on technology to uh, entertain them. Um, a lot of them are not getting out the house to uh, run a little bit. A lot of them are, are um, on the computers, uh, playing video games, um, just doing things that are not really physical activities that they should be doing. Thompson's advice to kids and parents about how to get fit while having fun. By an event like this, they can see that they can go outside, they can run around, they can do bubbles, they can, you know, play on the swing sets, they can, um, you know, just play little three-legged races and games like that. It's They don't feel like they've got to compete with other kids. They just have a good time themselves. So learning that at an early age, I think, is essential to showing them that exercise is a lot of fun. For more information on how you can get involved with Rec and Parks activities, go online to rockvillemd.gov recreation. The Rec and Parks Department is known for having quality classes and activities. We had the chance to stop by a popular power sculpt class to find out how one instructor is motivating her students for our number nine story. It's not just about fitness, it's about being healthy, it's about being strong, um, it's the way of life. Sharon Ramsey is all about fitness. That's why her power sculpting class is renowned by its members as one of the best in the area. Because Sharon is energetic, she's fun, she makes torture fun, um, and she 
you, she um, allows you, she helps you if you need to do something alternative. If you can't do a certain thing, it's no big deal. In addition to classes like power sculpting, Rockville's Rec and Parks Department offers a variety of programs for all ages and interests. There's an array of programs that we that Rockville does have to offer with different teachers that have different ways of teaching, all from like seniors to you know young, I mean kids. So I think it's an awesome opportunity. I think we're very fortunate to have it. For a city the size of Rockville to have such a strong recreation program with such a variety of fitness classes in many different locations taught by many different kinds of teachers is just phenomenal. Golfers brave the heat for the 41st annual Rockville Open at Redgate Municipal Golf Course. Isaac Asari along with Arthur Shee had the chance to cover the event for our number eight story. The Rockville Open Championship has been a tradition spanning four decades. The rolling hills of Redgate Golf Course always proves to be a challenge to the players who choose to compete. This year, over 100 players came out for the sold-out Rockville Open, but there was only one overall winner. Tom Monica, 2011 Rockville Open champion. Woo! And I understand you just filled out an application with Pedro from the top top two. I don't know what's going on. There you go. Oh, he's got all the hardware. These two days represent well, what Redgate is all about. It's an open championship and city championship for all levels of play. We have a full field every year. We're sold out again, I'm happy to say, for the 41st tournament. Um, and we have, although it's very, very hot, we have beautiful conditions here and we have players playing from all over. So this represents just not only Redgate and Rockville, but as far away as New York and the Carolinas. We have people traveling from all over to play in this thing. I'm the senior captain here at Redgate. And I just made like a 40-footer for par. It was a beautiful thing. And uh, this is a great event, the Rockwell Open. I've been playing it for like 25 years. And uh, hopefully it'll continue after this year because it's a great challenge for all the golfers to come here to Redgate, a very difficult course under tournament conditions. It's a very challenging golf course. And normally we've been regarded to have the you know, best day-to-day -day conditions of any public golf course in the area. Uh, we strive very much to, to offer private country club conditions for the public golfer and I, I think over the years we've done a very good job of it. Redgate Municipal Golf Course is one of the premier public courses in the region offering special rates for players of all levels. Well, this is a great municipal golf course at you know great discounts to play here. It doesn't get much cheaper to play in Montgomery County uh, if you want to play golf and we are centrally located close to 270 and a metro stop and um, we have 18 challenging holes, um, four sets of tee boxes, and the golf course is in great shape. Um, they're all positive reasons to come and play at Redgate. It's a fabulous, fabulous facility. Uh, they've done a great job of taking care of the regulars as well as uh, new people. The course is in tremendous condition and uh, appreciate the city's efforts in keeping it uh, a great facility. City Manager Scott Ellery recently made his announcement to retire in December after seven years on the job. We had the chance to sit down with Mr. Ellery in a special interview for our number seven story. We asked City Manager Scott Ellery to describe some of the big changes during his time as the city's top administrator. When I came here, uh, Town Center was a hole in the ground. Um, it had just um, gotten underway and of course uh, Town Center was dedicated, I think it's, it could it be four years ago now. And uh, we're still going through some uh, major adjustments over there and, and uh, very positive ones for Town Square. So that's been a big constant uh, over the seven years, uh, have been this, uh, this major redevelopment project and then uh, many of the adjustments we've had to make uh, here in recent, uh, in recent years. Um, the, uh, uh, I think another thing that uh, we've worked on very hard over the, uh, over the seven years I've been here is to uh, 
really I think the most important function of a city government is to maintain and provide uh, the basic infrastructure that makes life in the community uh, possible at one level but also um, creates uh, you know a high quality of life here. The, uh, um, when I arrived here seven years ago um, I think there's a, a real difference uh, bet from then to, to what we have now in terms of our strategic approach to how we um, deal with our basic infrastructure of the water and the sewers and the bridges and the sidewalks and the intersections and the stormwater. Um, we were providing very high levels of service, but I think our approach was um, uh, more of a, a tactical approach and a responsive approach to when things went wrong. And one of the things that uh, we've been able to, uh, I think, accomplish over the last seven years is to really take more of a um, of a proactive and anticipatory strategic approach so that we have uh, now have major uh, inspection and maintenance programs so that uh, we're not just hoping that you know the big catastrophe isn't going to come um, you know some of these things did catch up with us like the big break in the 24 inch line but um, um, the uh, um, I, I think that's been one of the one of the changes that's been significant is our approach to uh, to this basic infrastructure, and the and the council has been, and the community have been incredibly uh, supportive of that, and uh, because it isn't inexpensive to do that to do those things. So, Mr. Ollery also counts revamping the city's budget process to make it more transparent as a highlight during his time with Rockville. Our budget division, we when I got here, there was one person uh, in finance working on the budget. We did not really have sufficient analytical resources to uh, to do the kind of professional budget that we have now. Uh, we've been able to build that up to three people. We have um, arguably the best budget director in the United States uh, in Stacy Webster and um, I couldn't be happier and it just gets, keeps getting better and better uh, every year with the uh, work that she's particularly done on it. And I, I would say at the beginning too to make a, to totally uh, um, change the whole format and the approach of the budget isn't something that you know any city manager can do. It's it's all that we have 70, 80 people uh, working on the budget every year, to, and um, the departments uh, took on willingly the and, uh, and successfully the daunting task of in November, which is a pretty late date, with starting the budget. Um, particularly if we're going to you know, change the entire budget format. And uh, people didn't. Uh, people saw the importance of it and and, uh, and made it happen that very first year. So um, it wasn't a gradual thing. We got it done the first year, and every year um, people have made it better. One other accomplishment for Ullery, placing the right people in the right jobs on city staff. You know, everything we do here is, uh, you know, very important for the quality of life in this community, and so it's extremely important that we have only the best people and we hire the best people um, to, uh, to manage and to provide uh, these services. And Rockville is a um, very attractive place to work for local government professionals. Um, there's um, many challenges here. The, the resources um, to do your job is, is very good. So um, uh, I, I, I'm most proud of the people that I've been able to um, hire and retain here and uh, they really make all the difference for uh, the, um, the quality of the work that we do here in the city. Mr. Ullery has a message for city staff and the community regarding the hiring of a new city manager. This is um, one of the premier uh, city manager jobs in the United States and there's going to be you know, excellent candidates um, for the mayor and council to, uh, to choose from. and. Uh, I think that uh, there's no doubt that there's going to be someone coming into this position that's going to be very well equipped to lead the organization, uh, to support the mayor and council, and to take things uh, to the next level and to have the privilege and the honor of uh, being able to be the city manager of the city of Rockville is a, uh, is a very big deal, um, both you know, professionally and personally. Well, Councilmember Fraschela, thank you so much for joining us for our regular segment, Mayor and Council One-on-One. -on -one.
Thank you, Bridget. It's my pleasure as always. And we're inside the Mayor and Council Chambers. Um, it's a little warm outside, so we appreciate you uh, joining us here. <laughs> yeah, he doesn't bother me. It's okay. Though. Okay. <laughs> well, we're excited to talk to you about um, an exciting topic, actually. Uh, it's been kind of at the forefront. Um, it was discussed at a recent Mayor and Council meeting, and that is Rockville's economic competitiveness. Right. I think it's more properly at Rockville's economic situation and looking to the forward uh, to the future because, um, you know, the economic uh, you know, the economy is going to change in this area, and, and we have to adapt to it. So we're looking forward to that. Can you walk our viewers through, um, you know, some of the background on um, your recommendation on a study, and this, there's some talk of a summit. Can you give us a little bit of background on right. that? Right. John Britton, Council Member John Britton, recommended a summit, and we're calling it the Rockville Summit. It includes business leaders and neighborhood leaders and nonprofits and other leaders in the in the city and others who are interested to come together and talk about how to get along better and, and, and not be at odds so much. I came in a little bit later with an idea of a study of economic competitiveness and I was really concerned about a regulatory stature and how that prohibits or discourages businesses from coming to the city or, or forming in the city. So we merged those two ideas. I think that's a good idea. And we're working with a consultant now? Yes, Dr. Stephen Fuller from George Mason University, the Center for Regional Analysis. And he's an expert in this area. He's done this kind of thing before. Um, probably the most expert person we can get and a pretty, pretty reasonable price. How business friendly do you think Rockville is right now? I think in some respects it, it is friendly, but I, I think, it, uh, for example, to get something started to outfit a building for a new store, for example, or to, to do new development, it can be uh, very long-winded. We have a couple exciting um, new projects coming to the town center area. Um, the um, Choice Hotels International mm -hmm. just signed a lease mm -hmm. um, to be in the Folger Pratt area. Mm -hmm. And then um, the new grocery store also coming to town center. Um, your thoughts on that? Well, Choice Hotels International is, is just a, an incredible coup for the city. And there are a lot of competition. Uh, they are staying in Montgomery County. They are elsewhere in Montgomery County. But uh, the Folger Pratt site was prepped. I mean, it's got all its approvals. That, that counts for something very big. It's across the street from the, the metro. There's plenty of parking. It, it'll be a big booster town center. And what sort of role do you think Councilmember Prashela Reddy plays in all of this uh, with the study and the summit? Yeah, Reddy is Rockville Economic Development Incorporated, and they, um, it's their job to attract business. It's their job to help businesses start here and grow, and they're always looking at what their competition is. And, and if you listen to Sally Sternbach of Reddy, who, she's the director, Northern Virginia is always an incredible competitor to all of suburban Maryland, but including Rockville. You know, every year there's Ready Business Appreciation Week. Uh, the members of the council, city staff go and thank Rockville businesses for being in the city. What sort of feedback did you receive in that last Ready Business Appreciation Week? Well, I think they like being here. They, they like Montgomery County and Rockville in particular for the amenities and the services we offer. Uh, we're also uh, in the midst of, uh, you know, federal government agencies, especially in a health area, and it's a strategic location. But, you know, don't, don't discount the school system. It's a huge, huge attractor. What about, um, what, how can we decide what we want to look like 20 years down the road? I mean, what sort of factors are we going to be looking at um, with this study, with the summit? Right. I think the first thing you look at is the, our pillars right now, federal and state government employment, those are going to be stagnant at best. They may shrink. Okay, so how do you replace that? And I think uh, you're looking at substituting private sector um, diversity and growth for, for what we've always counted on from the public sector. And that's one reason that Choice Hotels is such a big win for us, because it's private sector, very good jobs, uh, you know, the kind of uh, property and income and, and other things that we want. Well, we'll, we'll continue to cover uh, this uh, story and um, hopefully the summit in October. And it's an election year, and I'm sure this will be a hot topic uh, for all the candidates. Yeah, and, and keep in mind that on Monday, the vote to have the summit and the study was five to nothing, and, and everybody spoke in favor of it. Because it is trying to bring people together, it's, it's not trying to put one sector at the cost of the other. So we're, we're going about it the right way. Great. Councilmember Mark Prashela, thanks so much, as always, for sure. joining us. No problem. One hour per week. That's all it takes for Rockville's mentors to give back to elementary school kids. We had the chance to find out more about the program for our number five story.
School might be out for the summer, but Community Services Program Coordinator Cynthia Bengali has her sights set on the fall. She runs the city's mentoring program. The mentoring program is a fun way for volunteers to have a hands-on way to help elementary school age kids. Now they're helping them with their homework as well as helping to build self-esteem through just wonderful bonding and connection. The mentoring program is in its 17th year in the city. It allows elementary school age children to meet with volunteers like Aurora and Felton in a group setting for one hour a week. Although the focus is on the kids, mentors get something out of the program too. I just feel like I am giving back to the community. I feel rewarded after I walk out every week that I've had a great time with my girl and I see a difference in her every week. Her ability to, you know, just kind of focus and listen and sharing stories about growing up with each other. It's just, it's been really rewarding. Part of it is supporting, but the other part is learning and the other part is getting an integrated uh, learning experience with the child. And everything that we do is supportive of, of the learning process and making sure that the child has a feeling that you're interested in, in him and his success and all that he's doing toward that success. And sometimes you spark an interest that might make them do better than they would normally do if they just work in the classroom. Seeing the growth in the kids every single year, it just, it not only does it warm my hearts, but it also tells me statistically when we do the surveys at the end of the year that the program is making a tremendous difference. Bengali knows that programs like mentoring are making an impact with kids. And I think one of the biggest things is that the kids have someone who really believes in them. It's not their parent, it's not the teacher, and that's not to say that those people that are already in the kid's life don't believe in them, but it's someone who is befriending them. But it's a clean slate for the kid, and the kid gets the opportunity to be affirmed in a friendly, fun-loving environment, and I really do think that that makes the key difference in our program. We wanted to let you know that Rockville also offers programs for middle school age children, such as the Achievers Program and the Fab Five Program. To learn more, contact Cynthia Bengali at 240-314-8317 or email her at cbengali at rockvillemd.gov. The White-Tailed Deer Task Force recently made their presentation to the mayor and council. We had the chance to check in with city staff and residents to find out where they weigh in on the issue for our number four story. Steve Mater is Rockville Superintendent of Parks and Facilities. He met us at the corner of Gaither and Goody Drive, a hot spot for deer-related accidents, to discuss the deer situation. I think deer have become very much adapted to urban areas. It doesn't take a whole lot of area to support deer. They feed on just about anything that's in your yard. Uh, development tends to push them out of maybe the forested areas. They adapt well, they're not afraid of us. We talked to a few residents to get their thoughts on the issue. I think everybody agrees that the deer population is just too high for the carrying capacity. Even if you accept the fact that there are going to be deer, the number of deer is just much too high. The White-Tailed Deer Task Force has been studying how to control the deer population in the city for the past year, and they recently presented their findings to the mayor and council. The report included solutions to address the problem. One option would be a controlled hunt. And generally in a managed hunt, um, the way they're set up is it's during a time period. So you would, for example, close a park for a week or whatever. And, and generally, from what I understand from the counties that we uh, met with, they, they go in and they want to shoot as many deer as they can. A managed hunt would have to be very, very managed considering the, the density of the population here and how many buildings there are here. Um, and I would be against a hunt in general since there are many other ways to deal with the deer other than a hunt. Yeah, there is an alternative um, and there has been research done. Uh, one is actually, you know, actually tranquilizing deer, catching them and doing surgery on them, basically tying their tubes. Next steps, so there's a public comment period for residents to weigh in on the report, which can be found online. The task and force will then go back to the mayor and council this September for approval on the report. Go online to rockvillemd.gov and search deer for more information or contact Steve Mater at 240-314-8702. The Rockville City Police is putting technology to good use in the fight against crime. We checked in with Chief of Police Terry Treshick to find out more about LPRs in this special edition of On Patrol for our number three story. It's, a, it's another tool to work smarter, not harder, use of technology, and we're very, very excited. 
Rockville Police Chief Terry Treshek is pleased with the city's new license plate recognition or LPR system. It was part of a multi-million dollar grant given to the D.C. region by the Maryland Emergency Management Agency and the Capital Region Council of Governments. You'll be able to tell the police officers if the car is wanted somewhere, if the person who drives the car is wanted. It'll tell you if there's revoked or suspended licenses or if the, if the registration belongs on that vehicle. This is the technology that runs the license plate readers. It runs in the background looking for numbers and letters to see who's out of line. Corporal Ken Matney oversees the LPR program. He showed us how the system works. What it actually does is takes two pictures of any vehicle you pass. It's a wide picture and then it zooms in on what it perceives as being a tag. So if it passes a sign, it will show up here in this area as a, a license plate and it'll run that against the list. The scanners were originally designed to catch car thieves, but now they serve a broader purpose. This will tell you if, if a vehicle is registered, uh, if the registration is expired, canceled, stolen, uh, if the tags are stolen, the car is stolen. It will tell you uh, any kind of outstanding flag against that vehicle. It also has a part in it that will tell you whether the owner of the car is wanted or not. That's a good thing to know if you're going to stop a car for any reason. If the owner is wanted, and there's a chance that the driver is the owner, you take a little extra caution before you walk up to the car. It's really looking for people that shouldn't be on the streets, for cars that are in violation of the rules of the road, or, or for drivers that are suspended or perhaps wanted for other different issues. Um, it's, it's a good way to quickly be able to scan the vehicles around you without having to stop and uh, pull to the side of the road and type it into their computer or make a motor vehicle stop itself. It's an unobtrusive way of checking to ensure that everybody's in compliance. For more information on the Rockville City Police Department, go online to rockvillemd.gov slash police. Now for an update on the city's development review manual for our number two story. In an effort to make the city's development review process more transparent and accessible to citizens, several changes to the process went into effect July 1st. And here are the changes. Required pre-application area meetings will be conducted prior to the pre-application meeting with the city's development review committee. City staff will attend all post-application area meetings to respond to process questions. Minutes will be required for all area meetings and must be taken by an objective outside source at the applicant's expense. And then the other change is all mail notices must include the date of the Development Review Committee meeting. In related news, Rockville residents are encouraged to apply for a position on the new Citizens Implementation Committee related to planning and development in the city. The committee will identify ways to further engage citizens in key planning initiatives. Interested citizens should contact Orlando Heiliger, Neighborhood Resources Coordinator, at 240-314-8343 or send him an email. Now for a quick hit segment for our number one story. Rockville will celebrate its third annual Restaurant Week from September 10th through the 18th. Organized by the Rockville Chamber of Commerce, the week will include more than two dozen restaurants offering special pricing for lunch and dinner. This week is part of the Buy Rockville program. You can go online to rockvillerestaurantweek.com to learn more. We wanted to remind you that city council election season is upon us and residents interested in running for the office of mayor or city council must file with the city clerk's office by Friday, September 9th. City elections are held every two years at which time the mayor and four council seats are up for election. This year's election is happening on Tuesday, November 8th. A detailed election calendar can be found at rockvillemd.gov slash election 11. We will have extensive 2011 election coverage all this fall, so keep it on Rockville 11 for the most information on the candidates, issues, and results. We wanted to also let you know that the city and the county will host a September 11th Memorial Remembrance Ceremony in Courthouse Square Park on Friday, September 9th. The ceremony will take place at 12.30 p.m. and will be a time for remembrance and tribute to the victims and their families as well as emergency responders and the military. 11 victims of the September 11th attack on the Pentagon were from Montgomery County. The program includes addresses by elected leaders, musical performances, as well as a wreath-laying ceremony. Rockville 11 will carry live coverage of the event in partnership with our sister county cable networks. Well, that's it for this edition of Rockville's 11. I'm your host, Bridget Breuer. We want to remind you to follow us on Twitter at, at Rockville 11. You can find all these stories and more on the city's website at rockvillemd.gov rockville11. That's it. Thanks so much, and have a great month.